All right, so today's Foundation Friday. This is where I try out a new foundation every single Friday on my channel. Today we're trying out a BB cream that has actually been around for a long time, like years now. But this is a prime example of one of those products that I would have steered clear from before Accutane. Now that I've been off Accutane, it's been really exciting for me to try like different tinted moisturizer and stuff. I've been trying out this one lately and I really like it. This is the NARS Pure Radiant Tinted Moisturizer. But this one I've just heard so many good things about over the years that I wanted to finally pick it up and review it for you guys. So this is the Dr. Jar BB Beauty Balm Multi-Action Skincare and Makeup. So this retails for $39, but you get 1.5 ounces of product. So you get quite a lot of product in here. It comes in three shades, which is pretty typical for BB creams. BB creams usually don't have the same kind of like shade range as a foundation. Some of them are self-adjusting and that's why they'll like adjust to your skin tone. Others are just more sheer. So the idea is that like hopefully you can blend it into your skin, but you know, three shades. So I have the lightest shade, which is light to medium. Then they have the shade medium to deep and deep. This does have SPF 45 in it. It's supposed to give you natural coverage and a dewy finish. So it's a moisturizer, sunscreen, and serum all in one to hydrate, prime, protect, and camouflage the skin. Great for all skin types, including sensitive skin. So I'm gonna start swatches right here of the lightest shade, light to medium, compared to some of my other similar kind of tinted moisturizer, BB cream products. All right, so swatches right here is the Dr. Jar BB cream in light medium. Next over is the NARS Tin and Moisturizer in the lightest shade, light zero, Terranov, Terranov, Terranov. Ilia Tin and Moisturizer in the lightest shade, T1. Physicians Formula Healthy Foundation in L2. Dermacol 208 and CYO Life Proof in 101. So these two are pretty close shade matches for me. They are more neutral and almost can look a little bit gray in undertone, but as you can see compared to this one, this is like extremely, extremely gray. So if you enjoy Foundation Fridays, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. If you're new here, you can join the Bayrito family and subscribe. I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. I also announced the winner to last week's giveaway. So it's down below in the description box. I'll put it there too, but I also put it, you know, in the Instagram caption and everywhere else. Okay, so it is 7.38 in the morning. Already washed my drives, prepped my skin for makeup. I actually filmed the morning part of my skincare routine video. So you guys will be either seeing that video coming or it's already up. If it's already up, I'll link it in the eye and down below. But I've gotten a lot of questions about what I've been doing for my skincare lately. So I showed you guys what I do at night and in the morning. I figured it was a good day for a BB cream because I'm feeling pretty tired. I have a little foster dog with me right now who did not sleep through the night. So we woke up a few times, but uh, I just want to do like a chill foundation Friday on a BB cream, but let's take this out. Ooh, look at that snazzy packaging. It's actually hard. It's like a plastic. So natural coverage and dewy finish. So it has a pump on it, of course, because you wouldn't be able to squeeze this anyways. It looks a little dark. On half my face, I'm gonna use my angled Kabuki today, the F88, and on the other half, my LA Girl sponge. Very, uh, almost like gray undertone. I have my vitamin C serum on right now, so my face is a little bit more orangey than naturally, but you know, I just match whatever to my neck. On an everyday basis, I like light coverage if I'm doing like no makeup makeup. If I'm doing a full on like winged eyeliner and everything, I'd rather just have on full coverage foundation or a fuller coverage foundation. But if I'm doing no makeup makeup, I like products like this where it just kind of like, Totally forgot about the sponge. <laughs> hold up, hold up. I'm gonna quickly do this side. Talking and spacing it out. It's looking quite dewy. Okay, now let's try the sponge. I need to wash my hair so bad. That's why it's in a really great bun today. Okay, so that just soaked up a lot, like all of that. So definitely a brush one. So I'm gonna go back in with the brush. It does almost look like gray or pink or something. Undertone doesn't quite match my skin. It does feel very moisturizing. Doesn't feel like a gel, like it doesn't feel like the Hourglass Illusion Skin Tint. It just feels more like, kind of like a wet moisturizer. Definitely looking very dewy. I'm gonna try and build this up over here. Just on my scarring and stuff. It does look like it's building. The shade is kind of throwing me off, but hopefully once I have the rest of my makeup on, it'll look a little bit more normal. Because this one is already so glowy, I don't think I would use my vitamin C serum on days that I use this, or I would use a different moisturizer or SPF underneath because this is very glowy. It's feeling very comfortable on my skin, and I feel like my skin just looks very like plump. I do think I look 
way overly dewy right now. Like I said, could be a combo of the products I used underneath, but I am probably gonna powder this because it does feel gel, like kind of sticky to the touch. And it also just looks like way too glowy, which is a lot for me to say because I love glowy skin, but this is definitely like a little bit of glow overboard right now. I'm just gonna do that on camera with you guys so you can see kind of like how it transforms. I'm just gonna do a little concealer. You can see how yellow this looks compared to my face right now. This concealer shade it usually doesn't look that yellow, but just because my face is such an interesting undertone right now. Okay, I'm looking just like very oily. So I am gonna powder parts of my face. Whenever I do powder on like my forehead and stuff, it's only in certain areas. If you have dry skin, try just like targeted powdering. Don't powder the areas you know are gonna look super cakey like I get right here. So I'm gonna powder just certain areas that I know I can powder. The powder I'm using is my Physicians Formula Airbrush Powder. This does add a little bit of coverage, but this is what I've been using every single day. And with this product, because it's so glowy, this is how I would wear it. I wouldn't wear it on its own like this because like I said, it just looks greasy. Powder basically everywhere except right between my eyebrows. Powder does fine on my skin over here. It's just right on the center of my forehead where I avoid it. And I like a little bit of glow right there as long as like the rest of my face isn't too greasy looking. All right, so that's personally how I would wear this product and I like how my skin is looking right now. It looks very smooth. It doesn't seem to be creasing anywhere. Overall, right now, I am liking how it looks with that powder on. So right now it's 7.53. We'll probably call the check-in time eight o'clock, but I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup and I'll be right back. All right, I just changed from one brown furry jacket to another brown furry jacket. And um, I was planning on doing natural makeup. <laughs> Didn't exactly happen. It's now 8.12, but overall right now, I'm liking how my skin looks. I still feel like the shade looks a little bit off. So I think for me, I would probably use this more as a mixing product, but I could see this being nice to add SPF, add a lot of glow. And I feel like even with that powder on most of my forehead, the glow is still really coming through. Right now, I'm still definitely leaning towards the NARS Pure Radiant Tinted Moisturizer. Really like this one. I like the Jouer Skin Tint, but that one is too dark for me. So eventually I'll do a video once I've tried out some more of my favorite tinted moisturizer kind of products or BB creams. That's where we're at right now, but I do like how my skin is looking, so I don't think it looks bad or anything. I don't have any complaints. I'm not getting like a lot of creasing. So for my eyeshadow, I use the L'Oreal Paradise Enchanted Palette. I've been really liking this. They are very powdery, so you need to use like a sticky base. I just use my MAC Paint Pot, but the shimmer shades in here wet are beautiful. That's how I apply them. This is all I have on my eyes right now. I didn't actually use a highlight today because I thought my skin would just be like too overly glowy if I used a highlight. So I only used a little bit of bronzer and blush. I actually tried out the Shop Miss A Lotus palette. I think this is a new palette by them and they have this really light bronzer shade. And I kind of mixed these two and I really like it for just like a natural kind of looking bronze. And then I used my Collab blush. And for lips, all I put on was the Buxom Sandy Lip Gloss, which I've also been really liking. So we're gonna switch cameras and I'm gonna show you guys what this looks like in natural lighting and we'll do a flash test. All right, so here we are in natural lighting. I look even glowier. <laughs> Dude, I cannot imagine how this would look if I didn't set it with a powder. Like, look at how glowy my forehead still looks with the powder, and this is without setting spray. The finish of it looks really pretty. Like, it does look very smoothing and just kind of like more of a natural glowy finish, so I do really like how it's sitting on my skin. I don't think it's looking too creasy anywhere. It definitely doesn't look dry anywhere. And again, I don't have any highlight on, so that's just like the glow coming through. Okay, flash test time. For being as glowy as it is in real life, I, it actually doesn't look as intense in flash as I thought it was gonna. I have major bounce back like right on the center right here. So that's showing up, but it doesn't look like, you know, crazy or anything in flash. I think I would wear it. It doesn't look, doesn't look too much like white cast. So check-in time is eight o'clock. I'll see you guys in a few hours in natural lighting. Someone is here to do the foundation check-in with me. So it's now 12 o'clock, so it's been on for four hours. And my year. Starting to feel a little bit crappy, so I just want to do the check-in a little bit early. Ooh, it's looking good. Getting a little bit of creasing around my mouth area, but my forehead still looks really nice, and I like the way the rest of my skin looks. Here's everything up close. For me, the amount of creasing I usually get, it's looking pretty good. I'm getting a little bit right there. On camera, it looks like I'm getting a little bit of separation right there, but I actually can't see that in real life, so not sure. I am gonna lay down with the hot pack on, but I'm gonna try and just put it on the back of my neck so it doesn't like 
rub the foundation at all but i will see you guys at the end of the night right <laughs> all right so it's now five o'clock so it's been on for nine hours i realized i need to change my background so you guys can actually see the time but it's five o'clock so i tried to only lay on my neck i had to take one of my pills and i was out for a couple hours but i feel better right now the pill kicked in so i did have to lay on part of my face right here but considering that i had like the hot pack on and i was laying right there i actually think it stayed on pretty well like you can see where you know, a little bit is rubbed off more than on this side, but it doesn't look bad considering. I do think it looks a little bit oily, but I'm not getting bad creasing at all. My upper lip looks good, around here looks good. Overall, for being on for nine hours, it looks pretty good. I do feel like I actually might wear it again just with that powder. Throughout the day, I've liked how my skin has looked. I do think this is one that I'm gonna have to play around with the products that I use underneath it so it doesn't look overly greasy. But overall, I like this one. I like the way it sits on my skin. I like how plumping and just moisturizing it looks. I think this is definitely only one for dry skin. If you have oily skin, this is probably a hard pass. Even if you have normal skin, you'll probably have to use kind of more like mattifying products on top of it. So I like that you can kind of do whatever you want with this one. I do think I would use it as a mixing foundation. I'm going to try this in another way tomorrow. So I'll probably pop in that clip right here. All right, so I'm just on my phone. I just want to show you guys what it looks like the next day. I'm wearing it right now. On its own, I used the same Physicians Formula powder, but I didn't put on the vitamin C serum underneath. And it did look a little bit less dewy, like it looked still super glowy like i would have to set it but it didn't look as crazy like greasy i used the physician's formula powder to powder my whole face like i put it between my eyebrows and everything and then i sprayed the catrice dewy glow over top and i feel like the shade definitely looks still totally dark you can see my neck here like i'm looking pretty bronze right now but i'm wearing a turtleneck so it's okay but i don't think i would wear it like this again i think i would have to mix it with something just because of the shade and also I'm getting like a little bit more creasing today. I think just because I put on more of the powder. I still feel like I need to find a way to make this one work, but I feel like I definitely can. I hope you guys enjoy Foundation Fridays. If you didn't give it a thumbs up, I have a whole playlist down below with others. But I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.